Jim Florio clearly had the courage of convictions more than anyone who served as governor of New Jersey. He had the, the political determination and courage of Brendan Byrne, but probably without the same level of political skills. Uh, but he had a, a determination to achieve and to do so in a short order that most of the other governors, even good governors who stood for the right things, were probably more patient or more willing to compromise. Uh, which of those is the most virtuous? I'll leave to others to decide, but I admired his courage. What do you think his legacy will be? Missed opportunity. I think Jim uh, presented an agenda. He was an opportunity that was missed by the state of New Jersey. Uh, had he been reelected, had he succeeded politically, the state would be a different place today. And many of the debates we're now having about our abysmal fiscal health, the continuing failure to address our educational difficulties, we wouldn't be having all those debates, at least not to the same degree. If Jim Florio were a candidate or governor today, given his courage, uncompromising courage on policy to do the right thing, what would he do? And I think the greatest contribution Jim Florio could make to those who now aspire to be governor would be simply this. Running for public office is not fun. Being in public office is not fun. I'm an expert on both of those. Just do the right thing. Whether it is about taxation or spending or dealing with the pension problems, dealing with our endemic transportation educational problems, do the right thing. And if it doesn't work out politically, life goes on. Public life is a stage of life. You get the reins of power, do the best you can, make the greatest contribution you can. If it works politically, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But you walk away from it saying, I tried to bring everybody in the right direction. In fairness, the hands across New Jersey and a lot of that, which people were talking about being a revolt on taxes, really was about the assault weapon ban. It was funded by the gun lobby. Uh, they didn't have the courage to come out and fight on their own issue, so they just spent money uh, believing they cared about taxes and spending. In fact, they were trying to hurt anyone who was for banning guns. Tom Kane led, and perhaps appropriately, incrementally. He saw where he was, he knew where he wanted the state to go, and he was going to get there step by step. That's not Jim Florio. He saw where he was, he knew where he wanted to go, and he wanted to get there in a hurry. Uh, and if it wasn't revolutionary, it certainly wasn't incremental. Uh, they had different outcomes. You can argue which is better. I also was very supportive of Governor Whitman as governor because she also shared my passion for open space, uh, which in addition to the environmental issues that Jim Florio pursued was the other thing I felt so strongly about. And she was very good on open space. There is no position in the United States like the governorship of any major state. The governorship allows you to wrestle an issue to the ground, pin it, and pull it into a different time. Uh, whether it's education or the environment or economic development, it is an entirely different ability to impact people's lives and, 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 and change the future. Uh, and I regret not having done that at some point in my life. I wish that I had, because when you see people who have done it and done it well, they've changed lives, not by the handful, but by the millions. <laughs>